The Carolina Panthers had a strong first week of free agency, but all y'all want to talk about is who they're going to draft. I get it. Makes sense. That's why I'm right here to answer your weekly Friday mailbag questions right here on Locked On Panthers. You are Locked On Panthers, your daily Carolina Panthers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into another edition of the Locked On Panthers podcast, a part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, as always, Julian Council. Talking Carolina Panthers with you every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Your team every day. That is our motto here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Subscribe or follow for free on YouTube and wherever you listen to all your favorite podcasts. And be sure to follow me, Julian Council, on Twitter, at Julian Council, where on Fridays, like today, I answer your weekly Friday mailbag questions. And if you'd like to participate next week on the weekly Friday mailbag, either at me or DM me on Twitter at Julian Council. Today's episode of Locked on Panthers is brought to you by the all-new, all-electric 2023 Nissan Aria. The Nissan Aria, the EV for people who love to drive. Learn more at NissanUSA.com. Apologies. I'm getting the mailbag out to you a little bit later than I usually do. I know last week I was out in Arizona, so waited until Friday to get it to you. And, of course, doing the same thing as um, the NCAA tournament is going on, y'all. And Virginia got upset by Furman, and I was ecstatic because I hate Virginia. I poured a glass of bourbon in their demise to toast and celebrate that. And once that happened, I wasn't recording a show. And I was going to watch Duke and hope that they would lose as well. They didn't. They blew out Oral Roberts. First day of the tournament. Panthers didn't really make any moves. The only thing I'm concerned about is watching college basketball. So you're getting it here Friday morning before the games come back on this afternoon. This is my only window to get you the podcast. Otherwise, you would not got the podcast at all. Kidding. Of course, I was going to get it to you. So here you go. You have it now on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And then there'll be a brand new episode on Monday. So I want no complaints from anyone out there. Now, we'll get to the weekly Friday mailbag here in a minute. But I do have to comment on a couple of Carolina Panthers signings and visits made since the last time you and I had a conversation when Mike K, the Charlotte Observer, was right here on the show. Y'all know my principled stance against paying running backs, right? You understand how I feel about running backs getting paid. Federal minimum wage, $7.25 an hour, 29 hours a week, no overtime, no benefits, none of that. That's how I value running backs in the NFL. Now, of course, that's really a joke. I do want everyone in the league to get paid as much as they can while they still can. And I hate when players take a discount. It, I honestly find it just horrifying because this is a business. And these owners and teams will dispose of your broken body as soon as they can. So squeeze for every single penny, especially for guys that have won a Super Bowl. If you already won, what are we doing, man? Why try and sign for less money to stay there and keep winning? Screw that. Get the money and run. But some guys, I guess, are better men than me. I don't know. That's just how I feel. But when it comes to running backs, we have seen in the NFL the devaluing of that position. How you can go out and draft somebody and get basically the same production for far less money than you could get for an experienced and established player in the NFL. There's enough running backs with less mileage coming out of college every year where you don't have to pay running backs at all. And the same thing, honestly, applies to wide receivers. Unless you have that A1 top of the line wide receiver, I don't really see why you would line up to sign a number two or a number three unless it's, things are just that desperate, like they are right now here in Carolina with DJ Moore having been shipped off to Chicago. Typically at wide receiver, you can find enough guys who can catch the football and are cheaper options. So saving money is what teams should do. And running backs certainly are a position group that you should be trying to go in the bargain bin for. And we've seen the last couple of years in Carolina when the Panthers gave Christian McCaffrey that large contract and he subsequently got injured basically every year after that, Mike Davis came out here and played really well. He had 1,000 yards from scrimmage as a running back in 2020. We saw what Deontay Foreman did last year after the Carolina Panthers traded away Christian McCaffrey. We have seen it two of the last three seasons 
what you can get out of the running back position if you have the right guys here on the roster, and they don't even cost that much money. So when I saw the Carolina Panthers were signing Miles Sanders, I just, I didn't understand. I really just laughed and shook my head and just asked why. Why? Four years, $25 million. And what does that actually mean? It's $13 million total guarantees. He's got $11 million guaranteed at signing. So he's got a signing bonus. 2023 salary is fully guaranteed. 2024 salary is fully guaranteed. And then the other $2 million that he has guaranteed is going to come into the roster bonus for 2024, which is the third league day of 2024. So he's going to get his money. He's going to get $13 million over the next two seasons. And then after the 2024 season, they're in that 2025 offseason. The Carolina Panthers can part ways and wash their hands of Miles Sanders if that's what they decide to do. He's here because of Deuce Staley, the assistant head coach and running backs coach in Carolina. Deuce Staley, of course, an Eagles running back in back in the day, also coached in Philadelphia with Frank Reich and coach Miles Sanders. Sanders is here because of Deuce Staley. Now, what I want my assistant head coach who's a running back, having that much influence in signing running backs, a position that has very little value in the National Football League nowadays, I personally wouldn't. But it is what it is. I'm not all that upset, honestly. I did see Deontay Foreman sign for $3 million in Chicago, and that actually was his spot track market value. By the way, um, a good Samaritan named Jim listened to a spot track uh, podcast and told me how to actually pronounce her name. So now I know. But he lo- but spot track had Deontay Foreman valuation as $3 million, and that's exactly what we got in Chicago. Now, people are going to say, all right, well, you bring him. Who's going to catch the football? Because we did not see him do that last year. We know Chuba Hubbard can't catch. You could draft somebody to do that, y'all. You could draft somebody. You did not have to sign Miles Sanders, who had a good season last year in Philadelphia and who I think is a good player. I actually like Miles Sanders. I liked him back when he was at Penn State. I liked him with the Eagles. I do not dislike Miles Sanders, and I honestly don't necessarily dislike the overall move. The problem is I'm a principled man. And my principles tell me you never pay a running back. Draft them, use them, abuse them, then lose them. That's my stance, and all of y'all should know that. But, hey, welcome to Carolina Miles Sanders. I think he'll be a good player for the Panthers if he gets injured. Well, shouldn't have paid him in the first place. Uh, also, another sign the Carolina Panthers uh, made was defensive tackle to Sean Williams, a Clemson Tiger back here in the Carolinas from Daniel, South Carolina. Originally, his cousin, by the way, is DeAndre Hopkins. Could that mean he's coming to Carolina? Possibly. I don't know. Either way, 30-year-old Williams started 15 games last year for the Broncos. Who's coming over from Denver? Yes, that's right. Jero Rivera, the new defensive coordinator. You got Dom Capers in that senior defensive role. And, of course, some others over here on a defensive staff. So, Williams makes plenty of sense in his career. He has 34 starts in 50 games with an interception and four and a half sacks. Earlier this week, the Carolina Panthers went out there and brought home a Carolina boy in Shy Tuttle to be their starting nose tackle, putting him next to Derek Brown. You also wanted another veteran on that defensive line as you look at some of the guys out there who are on the roster. Bravion Roy, Macar- Mar- Marquand McCall, Etor Grosmatos. Have not seen enough from them to feel overly confident in just Brown and Tuttle here. Smart move by the Carolina Panthers to bring in Deshaun Williams, a veteran presence who started 15 games in this exact same scheme a year ago in Denver. And of course, Jero Vero and a lot of defensive staff coming over from Denver. They are paramount in the reason why Deshaun Williams is now here in Carolina. Two other things, wide receiver visits. Panthers need some wide receivers. Love Terrace Marshall and his potential, but hope is not a plan. Shai Smith, okay. Malishka Chanel, again, okay. The Panthers need to add playmakers. I did it with Hayden Hurts. Happy about that. Miles Sanders can now catch the football in the backfield. We cannot understate the value of that. And if there's any value of Miles Sanders and giving him $13 million totally guaranteed over two seasons, it's the fact that he can be a threat in the pass game coming in the backfield. Did not have that last year once McCaffrey was gone. Now they have that with Miles Sanders. So plus on that, certainly, and Hayden Hurst. So you have two other options. And I talked about when McCaffrey was here, one of the big reasons why I think Anderson, even Curtis Samuels, had a big season in 2020 was the fact that McCaffrey was injured. Because DJ is your, a, is your 1A, McCaffrey is your 1B. So when you have options coming out of the backfield and that tight end, that certainly can help your quarterback. So I know we're going to spend a lot of time focusing on wide receivers. Well, it's not overlooked overlooked the importance of signing Miles Sanders to be a pass catching back, even though I don't want to pay him that much money, and also signing Hayden Hurst as a pass catching tight end. Like that is important. But the Panthers need wide receivers. Adam Thielen came in on Wednesday, have not heard much about his market since then. And then DJ Chark 
He came. He's coming in on Friday today. So we'll see how that works out. He provides that deep ball threat the Panthers need. Paris Campbell, someone who I linked to Carolina, played for Frank Reich in Indianapolis. He is now signed elsewhere. Darius Slayton is staying in New York. Uh, Jacoby Myers is going to Las Vegas. Very weak wide receiver market. Looks like Odell Beckham Jr. in Dallas. That might be the marriage there as far as that relationship goes. Chark, one of the better options that's still available out there. I've not heard much about McCall Hardman either yet. That's where we stand as far as wide receiver visit for the Carolina Panthers and some of the latest signings since the last time we talked. Now, that's why you guys are here, it is for the weekly Friday mailbag. So let's go ahead and get into it here in just a moment on Locked on Panthers. But before we do that, March Madness is here, and so is the built March Madness bracket. We know you have a favorite bar or puff, and now's your time to make it count. Go to BuiltMarchMadness.com to vote for your favorites. And when you vote for your favorite bar or puff, you will be entered into a drawing where 50 lucky Locked On listeners will get a free box of Built. Not only that, but... One special Locked On fan will win a 12-month subscription to Built to have Built's best bars or pups delivered monthly straight to your door. You got to try Built. Built is by far the best protein bar ever. Seriously, they're so amazing. You won't think that they're good for you. What makes Built bars and pups so good, you ask? Well, for starters, they are all high in protein, low in sugar, and covered in 100% real chocolate. That's right, real chocolate on every single bar and puff. Run, do not walk to BuiltMarchMadness.com right now to vote for your favorite bar or puff and pick up a box while you are there. You can vote every day in March, so hop in and support your pick. All right, at me, DM me on Twitter, at Julian Council. That's how you get in on the weekly Friday mailbag. And knowing that we have a six-week march until we find out who the Carolina Panthers' new quarterback will be for the future, you got to ask really good questions. Because if you don't, probably not going to have your question answered here on the show. But I always answer your questions even in the DMs. I know there's probably someone saying, hey, you never answered my question. I'll get to you eventually, or I just might not have an answer for you. So there it is. And of course, of course, though, follow me on Twitter at Julian Council. Let's see. Weekly Friday mailbag. Who gets to start off this week? Natalie does. Who's asking about wide receivers because the Panthers need wide receivers. She asks, do you think Fitter would consider trading draft capital in order to get a wide receiver not on the market? Hmm. Similar to how the Bears got DJ from us. There's not a deep wide receiver class, so it seems like the only way to get a quality wide receiver right now is to trade with teams for them. It seems really, in all caps, important right now to have weapons for developing our rookie quarterback thoughts. Yes, it's important. I also would tell y'all, the rookie quarterback does not have to have every single wide receiver weapon available this year. That does not have to be the case. It helps, as I just mentioned before, that Miles Sanders can catch the football out of the backfield. It helps that Hayden Hurst has shown that he can catch the football and do something with it. You have added that to his arsenal, along with an interesting prospect in Terrace Marshall, who we hope can have a breakout season this year, and then Shai Smith and LaVishka Chenault, who can also play whatever role they're going to play this upcoming season. But you need more veterans. Of course you want that. I assume they're going to draft someone in the second round. We'll see whatever whatever move is that potentially Scott Fitterer potentially makes going into the draft or during draft night to be able to procure some talent at wide receiver. It's not going to happen immediately. Joe Burrow didn't immediately have Jamar Chase. He had T. Higgins when he was drafted as well, and he also had Tyler Boyd already there. We can't say the same thing for Carolina. They don't have that Tyler Boyd. Maybe that could be a Tyrus Marshall. We'll see. They added someone, Cincinnati did, the same year when they drafted Joe Burrow right after him in the second round, T. Higgins, which I think the Panthers are probably going to do. Draft a quarterback number one overall, then get a wide receiver in the second round. And then the next year, they could draft a wide receiver in the first round. Oh, wait, darn, they don't have a first round pick. So then they would have to trade for somebody who is either aggrieved or is wanting or maybe not on the market. Like you mentioned, they could do that now or next season. A player I'm looking at is T. Higgins. Think about A.J. Brown. In Tennessee, excellent player. The Titans don't want to pay him. So the Eagles trade for him, and they pay him. T. Higgins is in a situation I think all of us should be watching. Joe Burrow is extension eligible eligible this offseason. The Bengals should get that deal done right now because it's only going to go up more money next year if they wait. Jamar Chase is extension eligible next year. 
You want to get that deal done as soon as possible with Jamar Chase, one of the top five wide receivers in the league. So a Burrow getting paid this year, which is going to be a boatload, and then Chase likely resetting the wide receiver market again the next season. Are they even able to bring back T. Higgins for what he deserves, what his market really is? Maybe. I wouldn't be surprised if they can. He you know has a ton of cap space going into next season. The Carolina Panthers do. You know who could use a fringe number one wide receiver, which T. Higgins might be if he comes to Carolina or if he was not in Cincinnati? The Panthers could use that. I am looking at T. Higgins as somebody, if the contract talks don't kind of move along like he wants them to, the Panthers need to go out there and find a way to bring him here. Because Cincinnati, the last thing they want to do is to franchise tag him next year or to be in a situation where he walks and they get nothing. This would be the time to pounce on a player like T Higgins. And I think the Carolina Panthers absolutely should be looking to do that. All right. Going over to Alex now, who I think has another question kind of about wide receivers. He says, I agree that the Panther staff is working towards a prudent long-term plan. This could be a two year rebuild, but they also seem willing to swing for the fences if they believe in something. That's why they trade up to number one. The conversation is really focused on free agents coming here, but I wouldn't be surprised if the staff pulls off a major trade for wide receiver. What's the current asking price for DeAndre Hopkins? And could we be in on those discussions? Is there a number, another number one receiver on the outs of his current team that might be available? Just brought up T. Higgins, not a number one receiver, at least on his team, could and probably would be here in Carolina. But DeAndre Hopkins, I don't know what his market is right now as far as trading for him. I doubt that you'd have to give up a number one pick to get him. Probably something around like a third, second. I know that seems low. I, I think that's probably all it's going to take to get DeAndre Hopkins here uh, to Carolina at his age and with his salary and how it's going to also help Arizona just kind of clear up some cap space. doesn't help them as far as, you know, helping Kyler Murray whenever he comes back. But DeAndre Hopkins, from the reporting I've seen from Jane Slater of the NFL Network, who covers the Cowboys, he wants to be in Dallas. All the Cowboys sources she's talked about or talked to, Hopkins wants Dallas. But Dallas has not had a conversation with Hopkins or not really with Hopkins with the Cardinals in trying to bring DeAndre Hopkins to the Cowboys. If the player wants another team, don't think that's the conversation the Carolina Panthers should be having. Now, of course, in on every deal. So I imagine Scott Fitter will be in on that deal. Just don't see DeAndre Hopkins coming here, even though I know his cousin's here. This isn't college. This isn't high school football. Just because his cousin's on the team does not necessarily mean that DeAndre Hopkins will come here but it could be an added benefit. So we'll see how that works out. All right, over to Alex now who asks, Stroud or Young should be the top pick, but Levis and Richardson have been mentioned as options. Do you think the signing of Andy Dalton points to the Panthers making the logical pick of Young or Stroud since they both excel in the pocket? If the pick were Richardson or Levis, it seems like you'd want a dual threat quarterback as the vet, so you wouldn't have to change the offense. And then Allen, another similar question, Saying with now the signing of Andy Dalton, what time frame do you give him before sending in the rookie? Do you believe he starts in the first couple games? What if he's winning? How many losses are we willing to suffer before throwing the rookie out there? Or does the rookie just start and he's holding a clipboard from day one? So many questions in one question. Okay, so yes, I believe, Alex, that Stroud or Young should be the top pick. There is a conversation, though. And someone asked about this, I think, later on in the mailbag about Richardson and the potential ceiling that he might have and the Panthers taking a risk and sitting and waiting and seeing if they can coach him up. Uh, we'll have that here a little bit later and probably throughout the next six weeks. I don't think that signing Dalton points to any prospect, and I don't think it really matters um, whether Dalton is mobile or not. And I don't think you have to change the offense. Andy Dalton's a veteran. He's going to come here. He's going to learn this game. He's going to probably, like Mike K told us, get the first team reps during OTAs and mandatory minicamp, probably get the first team reps starting out in training camp, and then we'll see where it goes from there. I don't think there's any rush to play this rookie quarterback. Now, the only thing that matters next year is that the rookie shows signs that he's better than the direct that we've had the last couple of seasons here in Carolina. That is the most important thing. Now, you would like to win, of course, but the most important thing is him showing that, oh, he could be the guy. If you don't see that, not like the season is a total failure, especially if they get to the playoffs, but then there's a little bit more pressure on him moving into 2024. So, no, I don't think Dalton coming here means that, okay, they're going to have a pocket passer. Whoever plays quarterback here, they're going to try and cater the offense to his strengths. They're not going to just have one basic offense and be like, all right, this 
this quarterback has to fit this. It's not going to be like square peg in a round hole. They're going to cater whatever the offense is to the strengths of the quarterback and to the players on the team. Like that's how an offense should be run. Now, I don't know when, what the time frame is for Dalton. If he plays his first couple games, okay, fine. I'm not necessarily in a rush to get the rookie quarterback out there. The guy's supposed to be here for like the next 10, 15 years. And if that's the case, why does he have to play right away? It does not have to happen immediately. If this is a long-term play, if it's a long-term play, you don't have to just throw him out there just to appease fans and to put him in a situation where maybe he's not ready. So I don't know. If they're winning with Dalton, I don't think that necessarily changes anything. Yes, the team comes first over the development, but they feel like they're winning with Dalton and the rookie quarterback's ready to go, and that's their future, then fine, go to them. Only time will tell. These are really questions I cannot answer. I can guess, but I can't really answer it because I just don't know. We'll have to see. All right, let's take a pause here on the show. Come back and then answer the rest of your weekly Friday mailbag questions right here on Locked on Panthers. But before I get there, again, March Madness is going on in one of the biggest betting times of the sports calendar year, which means now is the perfect time to download FanDuel America's number one sports book because new customers, potentially you, get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. Just bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same-game parlay. So don't miss the chance to get your no-swept first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. It's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. All right, only two more here before ending the weekly Friday mailbag this week on Locked On Panthers. Going over to Andrew, who asked, if the Panthers were to trade down in the draft, what would be the best possible outcome? To me, if the Panthers are truly going to trade down, I was surprised when I saw that report from Adam Schefter that they are going to keep their options open. I really feel like they want to move up to number one so they could make sure that they get their guy and that they were willing to part ways with DJ Moore and all that capital so they got their guy. And I think David Tepper is a big reason why they did that. We always say about the aggressiveness of David Tepper, and I really should not have been surprised by the Panthers moving up just knowing that David Tepper wants his quarterback. And if they want that rookie quarterback and he's bullish in getting him, the best way to do that is to move up to number one in the draft. So I have a hard time thinking that they're going to move back to number two. Maybe you like two guys the same. Maybe you don't. We all have to make a decision as far as think about relationships. you got to have options. There could be three, but in the end, you can only choose one. And you can say you like all three the same, but do you really? You can say you like two of them the same, but do you really? You, you got to choose one of them. And one of them is who you're going to get. So make sure you get that one. And I don't know if the Panthers can know for sure that Houston's not going to get the guy that they truly want. Because you could sit here and be like, okay, well, I want Young and Bryce Young. So I want and I want Bryce Young and CJ Stroud. But we can only have one of them. And I'm totally cool with either one. I just don't really believe that's the case, uh, to be honest with y'all. I think you're going to go up there and get the guy that you want. And the Panthers are going to be able to do that with number one. Now, if they decide that they want to move back to number two, I'm cool with that in a way. Because then they're going to get either Stroud or Young, who I think are the top two in this class. Now, I don't know if that's what they necessarily want, but we'll see. Best case scenario, if they do that, is that they can recoup a first-round pick next year and a second-round pick this year. That could give them another wide receiver, or even better, they could be able to get the 12th pick this year from Houston and then not even worry about a future pick next year because then at 12 they could get a first round wide receiver to then become their wide receiver number one that i think would be the best case scenario either recouping a first round pick or another pick oh sorry first round pick next year and another pick this year or getting number 12 from houston that's what i think would be uh the best possible outcome if they decide to do that last question coming from josh how likely could it be for the panthers to take richardson and let dalton start the season as a quarterback especially given the potential value of the incentives in dalton's contract give ar time to adjust and work on mechanics instead of throwing him to the wolves on day one will tepper's impatience with the quarterback situation lead them to drafting strouder young because they can start week one instead of taking a guy that needs work and may have a higher ceiling seems like each day can we can all rationalize a different guy at number one that certainly is the case uh, you can find a report about 
the Panthers liking Levis and Stroud and Young and Richardson. There's something out there from every outlet saying the Panthers like every one of the quarterbacks that are available at number one. What's true? No idea. It only remains to be seen. Um, yeah, uh, there is a case to be made that Anthony Richardson, uh, Anthony Richardson could be the best prospect in this draft. He has all the physical talent that you would want in a football player. And if you can coach him, get his feet right, get his mechanics right, maybe he has a higher ceiling than both C.J. Stroud and Bryce Young. I've already read the scouting reports that his best football is ahead of him. If that's true, is his best football better than Will Levis' best football, better than Bryce Young's best football, better than C.J. Stroud's best football? And this coaching staff is here in place to coach whoever the rookie quarterback is. And if that rookie fails, it's not going to be a second opportunity for Frank Reich. And for this staff, they're going to be gone. Same with Scott Fitterer. So it's important for Fitterer and for the staff that the guy they take ends up working out. Now, is Richardson a bigger risk? It seems to be the case. That seems to be the consensus. I have no idea. Maybe he is. Maybe he's not. There could be maybe a greater reward with Anthony Richardson just based off the athletic potential. Like He's shown the athleticism that he's shown compared to Young and Stroud and Levis. So maybe that makes sense. And it's not just Richardson. They could let Dar Dalton start the entire season and give any of these guys a chance to sit and be patient and learn. Who's to say that? I don't know if CJ Stroud's ready to go week one. I don't know if Bryce Young's ready to go week one. I have no idea if that's going to be the case. You have to go through the offseason and see how they pick up the offense and see if they truly are ready. I don't understand the rush to play these quarterbacks right away. If, especially if they're going to not gonna be in a perfect situation. Like, say the wide receiver situation doesn't get much better. Do you really want to throw him out there, even if you have Miles Sanders you can throw to and Hayden Hurst you can throw to? Do, is that what you really want to do, or do you want to make sure that they're confident, they're coming into a good situation? Like, if the offensive line has injuries, say Corbett's not ready to go, and then you lose one of your tackles, and of course, knock on wood, that doesn't happen. Do you want to put the rookie in that situation? Or would you rather have Andy Dalton out there showing him how to be, be a professional and guiding him along the way. And then when the time is right, putting him out there, that could be in, in 2024, that could be after week one, that could be after week 10. It doesn't really matter to me right now. I have to see how the season plays out, but Tepper's impatience. I don't think that's going to really determine when they play the quarterback. If anything, it's why they've moved up to get one at number one to make sure that they get their guy and then it's his staff's responsibility to make sure that that guy is ready to be the guy in due time. All right, that's going to wrap up this edition of the weekly Friday mailbag here on Locked on Panthers. Again, our podcast is part of the Locked on Podcast Network, hosted by yours truly, Julian Council. Make sure to watch the show, subscribe to the show over on YouTube. Check us out also wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. We are free and available on all of those platforms. Um, in the meantime, be safe, be happy, be whole. As always, keep pounding, and I'll talk to you all on Monday.